It should come as no surprise to anyone that I love me some murder, she wrote. Come on. Jessica Fletcher? She's a writer. I'm a writer. She solves mysteries. I uh, read mysteries. Angela Lansbury and I both have a deep respect and love for live theater. And let's face it, Angela Lansbury at any age can get it. And we're getting nowhere as fast as we're running. We should be taking it slow. Nothing means anything if all this means nothing. We don't know which way to go. So come with me and we will see. Today we're talking about Murder, She Wrote. Season 12, Episode 17, Something Foul in Flappy Doll. Also popularly known as, Look! Jessica Fletcher and Puppets! I'm not going to do a huge plot summary on this, especially since Pushing Up Roses has already done a great job at that. You should definitely check out her video on this episode, as well as more of that time on Murder, She Wrote. I've only got one small quibble with her video. Specifically, the inspector is neither a raccoon nor a squirrel. Voila! Le chat inspector extraordinaire, I've got you, how you say, red handed. Le chat literally means the cat. So to catch you up on what we're discussing, here's the bare bones of the story. Flappyville is a popular, long-running children's puppet show. They're working with Jessica Fletcher to bring her new mystery for kids to the screen. But at the same time, the show is in danger from behind-the-scenes backstabbing and corporate interference. The suits think that Flappyville is passe and that the kids want edgy. Backroom deals get made, confidences are broken. So, this guy is dead? It's a cynical storyline about children's entertainment, and that's what strikes a lot of people as weird and even off-putting about the episode. Similar to how, about six years later, Death to Smoochie tanked at the box office because audiences didn't want to think about children's entertainers being mercenary businessmen. But when you examine the context in which Something Foul aired, it makes a lot of sense. Let's start by looking at the context for Murder, She Wrote itself. Season 12 is known for being one of the most uneven seasons of the show, which is really saying something, because light mysteries on television tend to ping-pong between serious stories and high camp, and Murder, She Wrote is no exception. But things ranged far afield in this season, in part because the writing was on the wall. The network was under new management, and in the entertainment world, that tends to mean one thing. It's time to kill off everything the previous administration held dear. ABC started the process with a bang, ousting murder from its longtime Sunday evening spot, where it had ruled for years. And where was its new time slot? Thursday at 8. Right opposite NBC's fresh, new juggernaut, Let's be clear here. Putting a show opposite Friends in 1996 was not a vote of confidence. It was a death sentence. Executives at every network knew that NBC's hip, young squad would literally slaughter anybody they were up against. And at ABC, they used that to trim off the shows they no longer wanted to support. By the time Something Foul and Flappyville aired, the team at Murder, She Wrote was well aware that the network suits had hung targets on their backs. But is that all of the reason for this episode to exist? Well, no, there's one more thing we need to look at. The puppets of Flappyville have a number of distinct characteristics. The first is that they're rod puppets, meaning their arms are operated with a rod, allowing greater and more active movement. They have a very specific nomenclature. They're not puppets, they're the Flappies. The name is important. And they're headed by a puppeteer who is criticized for using the same voice for every character and who looks like, well, all right, fair play. This was actor Stephen Kay's standard look at the time. 
but somebody in casting definitely made a choice. Hey, 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 like the lamp, not the rat, like the lamp, not the Yes, the Flappies are so close in their nature to the Muppets that it feels almost impossible that the production team didn't have them in mind. And what was going on with the Muppets? Oh, you know, backroom dealing, executive meddling, no big. In the late 80s, early 90s, Disney was involved in a high-profile deal to purchase the Muppets from Jim Henson. The sale was painted as a good move for everybody. Disney got a popular franchise, the Muppets got the weight of Disney behind them, and Henson was allowed to maintain a creative role while being freed up to work on new projects. But the deal had fallen through in 1990 following Henson's untimely death. Even so, Disney maintained a distribution deal with the Muppets that saw them releasing the unqualified success that was the Muppet Christmas Carol. And then... Yeah. Nothing. You would think Disney would want to strike while the iron was hot, but the Muppets didn't head straight back into theaters. Now, there were other complications, not the least of which was losing the creative spirit that had led the Muppets since their inception. But nevertheless, the most news to come along in four years had been a development deal for a new Muppet show on ABC, the same network where you would watch Murder, She Wrote. In 1996, The Muppets returned to theaters with Muppet Treasure Island, which, while well-beloved now, was a box office failure at the time. And as for the new Muppet show, well, Muppets Tonight premiered in 1996 with the 13-episode order, and only 10 episodes ever aired on the network. Much like Murder, She Wrote, the change in management had brought in new people who wanted to clear out old ideas. And one of those old ideas was giving the Muppets a primetime slot. It's probably worth mentioning at this point that the new management at ABC was none other than Disney itself. Retrospectives of this time in the Muppet franchise often ask what went wrong. Treasure Island was critically, but not commercially, successful. And Muppets Tonight disappeared with a third of its episodes unaired. And a lot of times the conclusion is the same. Disney happened. Disney didn't promote Treasure Island as heavily as it had Christmas Carol, and ABC made a series of decisions that seemed determined to tank Muppets Tonight before it had a chance to find an audience. One of the big reasons Disney may have dumped the Muppets so hard is that, to be blunt, they didn't own the Muppets. Not only did that mean they didn't get all of the money, but it also meant that Brian Henson still had creative leverage. And this is not just a Disney thing. It's common in the entertainment industry as a whole. Studios and production companies often purge their contracts of things they don't own so they can concentrate money and resources on the things they do. By 1996, Disney executives were probably split between those who saw the Muppets as a dilapidated, passe brand, and those who just wanted to be out of a deal that made them responsible for the Muppets without granting them full ownership. Jessica finding herself on the set of a puppet show is not an accident. It's not a sudden whim. In that moment in 1996, the team at Murder, She Wrote saw and commented on a kinship with another storied, beloved brand who is being cut out by the management. And something foul in Flappyville, in all its messy, uneven glory, exists as a statement of that creative brotherhood. All just right, Thanks for checking out the video. What do you think? Was Flappyville a moment of creative solidarity between franchises? Or do you see something else in this? Let me know in the comments. And while you're here, be sure to like and subscribe. You can also help support the channel through our Patreon, or we have a Ko-Fi page. Both of those will be linked in the description below. You can even help just by sharing the video with your friends, and of course, hitting that bell so you get a notification every single time we update. So until next time, take care of yourself. Because I'm not there to take care of you.